Hi, it's Graham Dargy here, and today I'm going to look at processing this picture of Donotter Castle in Aberdeenshire. Uh, there's another video you can see on my channel uh, that I made when I was taking this picture, so you can get a feel for how the conditions were and what I kind of went through to get the picture. Not to say that I went through much, um, but we'll process this today in Lightroom, and um, we're going to have to do some Photoshop on the sky as well. Um, before we get into it, let me invite you to subscribe to the channel. Um, you can find some other Lightroom tutorials here and you can find out more about the different things I do, tours, safaris, local classes here in Aberdeen and I've got a Lightroom class starting soon in Aberdeen so if you're interested in that you can find out more on my website Um Okay, let's look at this picture. Um, this is how where we're roughly going to end up and this is where we're starting. So as the pictures come into the computer it looks like this. Um, the, really the, the process image is much more like the feel of the location at the time but this is what you get with the raw file. One of the tricky things with teaching Lightroom I think is it's hard to be very very prescriptive about you know how you should do everything all the time because every picture needs its own touch its own um, feel and so to be respectful to the picture we just have to assess it ask it what it needs and then try and do that. So f the first thing we can say this picture needs is a sky. So I, I kind of figured that out at the time when I was shooting it. So I shot a couple of other options for clouds that we might be able to Photoshop in later and we'll do that later on. Um, but for the moment, yeah, the sky needs done. Obviously the color needs to be warmed up and uh, there's some great texture in this big old rock here so we can bring that out using a local adjustment I think and um, yeah so those are the main kind of things that we'll be looking at doing so let's start off the first thing I do typically you work top down through this panel um, but the first thing I usually do is lens corrections chromatic aberration uh, we'll get rid of that and profile corrections so when you click profile corrections um, Lightroom knows the lens that you used every lens has a certain amount of distortion in it and some more than others and it just pops that distortion away so you, you kind of don't notice it until you get rid of it. There it goes. The next thing I usually do is level the picture. So I don't know if I've got one leg shorter than the other or something, but most of my pictures are come in a, a bit squint anyway. But that's okay for now. We might look at the crop again later. We just have to see how that goes. Uh, okay, back to the top here. The first thing I would look at, again, generally you're going top down through here, is the color profile that the picture is that the landscape profile tends to work really well for landscapes unsurprisingly vivid can work but well, let's go for landscape today and what's going to make a big difference I think is the white balance because you can see here the white balance is 5050 degrees Kelvin we want to make that m much warmer so let's try the shade white balance that's better uh, whoops let's try the cloudy one so between cloudy and shade it's okay I think it might need a bit more so it can just manually push that up. You can just click and drag on the Kelvin number there or you can use the slider of course. So I just want it to be nice and warm. It's a sunset and it just had that warm kind of sunset feel. That's okay. Okay, so I think what we need is some contrast and some texture in this picture. Let's take the highlights and push them all the way down because that brings some detail into the kind of brighter parts of the image. When you do that you lose some overall brightness in the picture so I can tend to drag up the whites a little bit to compensate for that. Also to add some contrast we'll just drop the shadows a little bit. And then actually we might just use some contrast on the contrast slider. You want to be subtle with the contrast slider. Just a few points. I think Pulling up the whites is going to do more for us. So just between the whites, the highlights and the shadows, you'll just find a, a place that you like. With the sliders, um, you can you can use the highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, sliders here, or you can just drag on the histogram up there. Sometimes I just tend to go up there, um, but it's all doing the same thing. Um, do we need to establish a black point in this picture? Let's have a look. Um, 
Yes, we do. So up here, we want to have a black pixel in the picture. So we'll slide the black slider to the left. Without the black pixel, the picture can just be a bit flat and a bit lacking punch. So I'll just pull that black slider to the left until these blue pixels appear. And where it goes blue, that's telling you that the pixel will be black. It's a black pixel, no detail there. So that's OK on just a few little dots here and there in the dark shadowy areas. Um, you don't want it on a big chunk of the picture, an important piece, obviously. Um, OK, and I'm going to counter that with some exposure. It just doesn't feel quite bright enough to me at the moment. So yeah, we'll pull the overall exposure up a bit. Maybe I'm going to pull the whites down a bit. So there's always a bit of to and fro in with these sliders until you get it just where you want it. Um, OK, let's look at the presence area down here. Texture is the newest thing. I like what the texture is doing to this rock, but I don't want the texture on the water and in the other areas. So we'll do that as a local adjustment in a few minutes. Clarity. Oh, not so bad, not so bad. We'll just maybe put a few points of clarity on there. Let's put uh, a bit of vibrance on there. That's just going to saturate some of the less saturated colors in the sort of mid-tones of the image. That's doing a good job for us, actually. With the vibrance and saturation, you don't want to just be too blunt about it. Be subtle, please. Just a little bit. Less is more. And if you feel like you, it's OK, maybe dial it back a little bit couple of points back. You just don't want to overdo it, and especially with the saturation slider. So sometimes I just leave that alone or I take a bit off. Okay, that's looking okay. Um, we'll, we might just adjust some of these things again later, but that's got us started. I want to do something with the sky here. Let's get the grad filter. Graduated filter um, will just pull a swathe a broad swathe of the image that you can apply an adjustment to. You can see that has come up green. You can change the color of the overlay by Shift and O. So typically it comes up red. I just find the green easier to see. So that's the area that's going to be um, affected by this adjustment. I'll just click O to get rid of that. This filter or adjustment area is active now and now this these sliders here will affect what happens up in this area. I want to just bring a bit more detail into the sky, whatever is there, let's have it. So we'll bring the highlights down a little bit. Exposure, a fraction. We don't want to go there, obviously, but we just want to bring whatever color is actually there. Let's bring it out. OK, and with these adjustments, you can toggle them on and off using that button there. That's OK for me. I wonder if I'll just push this up a little bit. OK, that's fine. We're going to mask in the other sky pictures over this. So much of this will be lost, but at least there's something there to blend with the other pictures. So that's going to be fine. Uh, and that kind of gets us going, really. Um, let's do the local adjustment on this rock. Um, when you click the adjustment brush, you get this kind of brush appearing here. And now you can just click and drag over the area that you want to adjust. You can't see anything there. Let me press O and that will show you where that adjustment is going. And I just want to get it on this kind of dramatic textured rock here. It's such a great location. Anytime you're down there, there's tourists from all over the world and it's really on our doorstep here. We're so lucky. Uh, there's a lot of castles in this area in the northeast of Scotland where we are. I'm based in Aberdeen, uh, the granite city. All the buildings are made of granite. OK, that's where the adjustment's going to go. Now let's apply some texture. Again, I did like what that was doing on the rock. My approach with the sliders really is just to kind of push it back and forth a bit. It would be good to just have some knowledge and say, well, 52 is going to do it on this one. But you don't always know. You just have to push it back and forth a bit. There'll be a point where the adjustment just bites and you just see it and that's it you know push it a bit further a bit back and then it'll just tell you it'll just tell you where it wants to land really and yeah, it's up about there somewhere i'm going to try a bit of clarity on here as well too much would be too much you just want to be a bit subtle here
lost a chunk of clarity there. And that brings out some nice texture in the rock. Uh, I wonder if we can do another adjustment on the castle itself. I'll just click new here. Now we have a new area that we'll be adjusting. Press O to bring that up. There it goes. And I'll just quickly paint on here. I have the auto mask box clicked. If you go down here on the right, and that means it automatically attempts to detect the edge of the area that you're painting. So it does a good job actually, but if you do happen to go over the edge, let's see if I can do that. And now you've got a bit there. You can take that away by pressing or holding Alt, and that turns the adjustment brush to a, a negative instead of a positive, and then you can just kind of brush that away. But generally the auto mask does a pretty good job actually. I'll just put a bit on here. And I can imagine me just putting a bit of clarity or texture on here, but it might not be exactly the same amount that the rock needs. So it's worthwhile doing a different adjustment for different areas. Okay. Okay. Oh, gets rid of the overlay. And let's try a bit of clarity in there. Uh, it's better. Brings out the texture in these old, old stones that this castle's made of. Okay. That's okay. And again, I can toggle this on and off just so I can see what's happened here using this switch here. Okay, that looks okay to me. Okay, let's call that done. We're going to open this now in Photoshop to mask in the sky. Um, so let's do that. Okay so here we are in Photoshop. I've opened the image of the castle that I was working on and I've also opened another image of the sky that I took uh, at the same time. So this shot was taken just to the right of this shot over this way somewhere and uh, you could do this with a, another sky from another time and another place. I find it a bit more authentic to do it if you can from something from the same location. Anyway the way that we're going to do this is to use uh, layer masks. So if you know about layer masks, you know about this, maybe you can skip this part, but if you don't, let's kind of go through this as simply and quickly as I can. A layer mask allows you to hide a part of the image uh, and reveal another image that you place underneath your main image in a stack like this. So in this case, we're going to place the sky, the new sky image underneath this castle image and we're just going to hide the sky here and that will reveal the new sky underneath. So let's take the picture from here of the sky. If I right click on there uh, and I'm going to duplicate layer, that's going to copy this layer into the other document, into the other picture. That's to make it appear in the other picture of the castle. Now that I've done that, I can close this and now we're back to the picture of the castle with the sky on top. So I'll switch that layer off and you can see it's there. Uh, okay, let me just reduce the opacity here so I can see where that sky is and I'm gonna pull it up there so it's more in the area of the picture that I want it to be. Being able to see both images just helps me to position that well and I don't want that to cut into the top of the castle, I want it to be up there somewhere. And I just have to be careful with the horizon line from the sky picture and the horizon line from the castle picture. That I'm just going to kind of line those up so that it's easier for me not to reveal this part of the land in my castle picture. Okay, put this back to 100%. Now I'm going to click and drag this down to place it underneath the castle picture. Okay, click on the castle picture here. This rectangle with a circle on it adds a layer mask. That adds a layer mask onto the castle layer. It's colored white. You can invert that by pressing Command I and now that would be colored black. And when the layer mask is, is colored black, everything on that layer is hidden but we want to reveal that layer, so we'll have that layer mask to be white. So to reveal uh, or to hide the part of this image that we want to, we'll use a black brush. So you just get the brush here, 
turn your color to black and if whatever you paint on with this brush I'll just increase the size of the brush with the square bracket keys that now reveals what's underneath that re that hides that part of this layer and reveals the layer beneath okay and then you change it back to a white brush and paint the layer mask white and that brings back what's on the top layer okay so let's go back to the black brush and we just want to I'm going to use quite a big brush on the sky here with a soft edge make sure the hardness is to zero that makes it the softest edge that it can be and now when I brush on the layer mask not on the layer itself that now reveals that cloud picture from underneath and now you can see there it's gone too far so we can take that away we'll do that later in a wee minute and this brush is now really too big for what we want to do let's turn that to white we'll try and take this away again painting white on the white layer mask brings back the top image or hides away the, the lower image now I want to make my brush smaller just using the square bracket key to do that Whoops turn that back to black because I want to start to reveal the new sky again I wonder if I yeah I'll just get a bit close there probably just gonna cut into the castle a bit and then we'll take that away again with the white brush hope this is making some sense if you're not used to it obviously if you know about layer masks this is no problem uh, and you can see that I've got a bit of a hazy look over there that's because of the feathered edge, it's slightly hidden that part of the picture but not completely hidden it so let's turn the brush black back to white and we'll just kind of go over this really really quickly for this video you could take as much time on this as you want the select and mask tool in Photoshop is very good um, but it might be a bit fussy for something simple like this so that's okay just make sure that I'm okay there on the horizon line and there's nothing whoops yeah there's a you can just make out a bit of the ground from the sky picture that I used and that's okay so for what we're doing now this is fine now on this zoomed in view you can still see some of these nasties here this is stuff on my sensor or something like that everybody has it right I think so is it just me and uh, you can take these away, you can clone these out in Photoshop. I'm just going to do it in Lightroom for this tutorial because it's a Lightroom tutorial. Is it? Yeah, the top of the castle still looks a bit dodgy. Let's just, yeah, fix that. Okay, so let's have a quick look back there. That looks okay. Let's go back into Lightroom. So I'm going to right click here, flatten the image, and then when I click up here to close this picture it's just gonna let me save the changes and then that sends it back into Lightroom where we'll finish off now that is the picture um, that we made in Photoshop and I want to go into full size here and I'll just go all around here and I'm gonna clone out some of this stuff I might do a little time lapse on this because this will be quite time consuming so you just have to click and it just picks an area that it thinks is the right area to cover what you're cloning out and again generally it does a really good job but if it doesn't you can just kind of move it around slightly they're most noticeable on the skies and you don't maybe need to spend as much time over the land because even if those nasty bits are there you just don't see them as much uh, just for finishing touches now I'm going to just have another quick look at the vibrance here. Just want to pop that a little bit. Um, vignette. Let's try a vignette. So if you roll down here, we're now applying adjustments to this TIFF file that's come back into Lightroom from Photoshop. And I just think a, a little subtle vignette just kind of pulls your attention into the middle of the picture. Be subtle, okay? We don't need to go that far, just kind of a little bit. The midpoint is how close to the center of the image the vignette goes. Roundness makes it squarer or rounder. We don't really need to change that for now. And you can just feather that on and off. It's a bit like the other sliders, just see where it bites and maybe go back a little bit. 
you can toggle that off and on. For me, that gives a more dusky, moody kind of feel to the picture. I'm not keen on it kind of darkening down this bit, so we could maybe just finally use the adjustment brush to brush back in on this wavy grass in the foreground. And we can bring that up with highlights, I think. Maybe a little bit of exposure there. Tiny, tiny bit. Okay, let's call that done. I hope that was helpful. Sorry that was a really long video, but um, between the shooting and the processing, I hope that gives you an insight into how much goes into a half-decent landscape photo. Um, I have spent longer uh, on pictures, for sure, and I've certainly spent less time. But again, each picture just needs its own handling. And um, if it's a good picture, a bit of a one-off, it's certainly worth putting the time into processing it. If it's not such a good picture, you know, just don't waste your time. Because half an hour, 45 minutes, it's a, it's a big chunk of time to invest in one picture. Okay, just before I log off here, uh, again, invite you to subscribe to the channel and check out the website, grahamdargy.com. Hope you enjoyed this. Enjoy your photography, and I'll see you again soon.